Good evening, YouTube, and welcome back to the probably can't fix it, but let's try anyway program. Tonight's feature, my beloved Battery Tender Plus. I've taken very good care of it over the years, only running it over twice and never yanking the plug out of the wall by the cord unless it was absolutely convenient. Ow. The other night, I left the ignition on in the Chrysler, and because it doesn't have an idiot chime for me, the battery died. So thoroughly, I couldn't even light my test light. So, I brought this out for one more miracle, and after a few hours of charging, it started smelling hot, and then it shut off completely. No lights or nothing. I killed it. You bastard! So, as is tradition, I scavenged the cord for future projects, said a few kind parting words, and tossed it into the landfill wormhole. As is tradition. And thanks to my Quicksilver cashback card from Capital One, the no games, no signing up every quarter, kung fu fighting cashback card, I was able to buy a new one with my 1.5% cashback. What's in your wallet? I don't actually have anything to do with Capital One, but you don't whore yourself out to the sponsors you have. You whore yourself out to the sponsors you want. It's called ambition, and it's also why I pulled this back out of the trash can in the first place. I can't give up that easily. I'm good, guys. Don't worry. First things first when troubleshooting a dead circuit board. Look for scorch marks and look for a fuse. And before you say anything, no, it's never the damn fuse. Why is it? Oh, there's a power transistor screwed onto the frame for heat dissipation. This bit is getting old. Tap, tap, tap. I'm not going to be able to squeeze this board out with that transformer installed. A oh, goody. More rivets. I love rivets! All right, let's take a look. I don't see anything scorched, and there's, there's definitely no fuse. It definitely smelled like that one time I melted a plastic plate on the stove, so I'm surprised there's no visual evidence. There's the bridge rectifier. The power transformer we saw steps the wall voltage down to a lower AC voltage, and then the four diodes that make up the bridge rectifier Convert that to DC, which is what runs the logic circuitry on the board and obviously charges your battery. There's a big Zener diode. They're like electronic check valves. They're usually used as flyback diodes, but I bet in this application it's actually used for reverse polarity protection. That transistor is my prime suspect. You can tell it was designed to get hot because of the heat sink compound and the fact that it was mounted to the frame. And anything that's designed to take heat will eventually overheat. TIP32C. That's a PNP trower transistor. They're commonly used in switching power supplies, which is effectively what a battery charger is. Excuse me. They're rated for a few amps, and they're super cheap to replace and super easy to bench test.
little bit on the back side, and off she comes. We have our base, collector, and emitter. With your meter in diode check mode and the negative lead on the base, you should see a healthy 0.7 volt drop from base to collector as well as base to emitter. If you reverse polarity, you shouldn't see anything at all. Dang it, Bobby. That transistor's good, which means I desoldered it for absolutely no reason. Next, I'm gonna check the transformer. If you've ever heard one pop during a summer storm, then you know they don't usually go quietly into the night. And this one looks mint, but it's an easy thing to rule out. So let's just check anyway. The secondary winding or low voltage winding should ohm out to a very low resistance, which this does. The primary winding, which in this case looks like it just goes straight to the hot and neutral lines, should read a higher resistance. The ratio between the two resistances tells you the step down factor. Nothing. Well, that's a clue and a half. You know, in hindsight, I should have started with the transformer because the lights wouldn't even turn on, indicating the whole thing was dead. If that transistor had failed it, it just wouldn't be able to charge the battery. And the lights would have worked, they just would have been blinking, indicating some sort of error. You can't exactly rewind one of these little power transformers in your garage, and the cost to buy a new one from DigiKey shipped probably isn't worth the investment. Even if you did find the turn ratio or part number on Google, which I couldn't. Since this thing is now totaled, let's do a post-mortem and maybe we can at least learn something. Well, that's interesting. A third leg on the primary winding. Normally, I'd say it was a center tap transformer, but look, two of the wires going into the winding are totally different types. That's a dang old thermal fuse, wired in series with the primary winding and embedded deeply inside the primary winding as overtemp protection. Just for kicks, I'm gonna do what one does with a potentially blown thermal fuse and bypass the f***er. Gonna plug it in and measure the secondary winding voltage. I'm expecting somewhere between 13 and 20 volts AC. Seventeen-ish volts. By George, I think we've done it. Got the secondary winding reattached to the bridge rectifier circuit on the board. And it's alive! It's not happy, but probably because it's not hooked up. Let me reconnect the charging lead that I shouldn't have unhooked during my fit of waste-making haste. And it's charging. And the transformer isn't even overheating, which is fortunate as I no longer have overtemp protection, so this is gonna burn my house down. So just to be safe, a 120 degree Celsius thermostat switch. These are like 50 cents a piece, and I'm gonna professionally and securely fasten it to the side of the transformer for some level of overtemp protection. This will be nice, because if it blows, it'll just reset again when it cools down. Self-regulating. Is it the right rating for this application? Like most of life's important questions, I don't know the answer either. But confidence. Professionally and securely.
I know I said this was a zero dollar fix and technically it was. I only added the 50 cent thermostat switch because I'm a mega weenie junior and if you're a real man, you can just skip this step. Can someone recommend a cheap riveter that actually works? Got it all back together without a hitch, as far as you know. Humming along nicely. Thanks for watching. You know, when Derek from Vice Grip Garage says he's going to put a dead battery on the boiler, I thought it was just shtick. But listen. Learn something new every day. Chemistry is neat.